speaks to me, the word British, of that long history of finding how you, you manage diversity in a, a single confined space. So I think it's had a very complex history over the last century and a half, really, from being very much Great Britain as the centre of a British empire, the focus of a, a worldwide community. It's come to be the focus of the British Commonwealth of Nations, and then, of course, has become a sort of Commonwealth of Nations almost within itself, with a greater diversity of religions, greater diversity of communities than perhaps ever before. But what I'm suggesting is that if we look back in British history, it's not the first time we've been diverse. It's not the first time we've had to negotiate with each other. Do you think of us as a civil nation today? We're increasingly uncivil, I think, because of the, the nature of political disagreement as it now is, the heavily theatricalised performances of politics now, where short-term entertainment value seems to be treasured, where intense zero-sum disagreement is privileged and foregrounded in so many ways. I worry a bit about our civility, I really do. And the forms of political disagreement that are so, so readily enabled by short-term media focus, by electronic media conversation, these naturally give some, some privilege to the sharp all or nothing divides, so that for you to win, I've got to lose. You win absolutely, I lose absolutely. And that means I have to fight very hard and I have to, I have to pretend, and it is a pretense, that there's really nothing we share. This comes the day after one of our MPs was abused as Nazi scum uh, by protesters in Westminster. Um, I wonder if you think that was just theatricality. It's more than just theatre because it does reflect some deep and unthinking prejudices and it does suggest of course that people haven't really thought what the word Nazi might mean. Do you think that Brexit was a manifestation of a complete lack of trust in politics and politicians? Those who voted for Brexit certainly included a significant number of people for whom the political class, the experts, the pontificators, the people who talk on Newsnight and so on, were not to be trusted. I know you've signed up to the Citizens' Assembly, um, which has in its manifesto this phrase, Brexit has come to test the patience of the British public. As a religious man, do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? As a religious man, I believe patience is a virtue. And by patience, I don't mean passivity. I mean actively, intelligently taking the time it takes to solve a problem. And do you think we're being given that now? I don't. I think that with the clock ticking so audibly at the moment, we are approaching a very dangerous cliff edge. I think we need more time. And part of the Citizens' Assembly project is to say, well, can we not step back from this? and spend some time thinking about what the questions are that we need to put both to Parliament and to the public. What does need more time mean? Does it mean revoke Article 50? Personally, I would, I would like to see that. That's not to prejudge how the referendum result is activated, but I would say we cannot arrive at a reasoned, sensible conclusion with the timetable we've got. Do you think a second referendum would be a betrayal of trust, a fingers up to democracy? Not necessarily, but I, I confess to being a bit agnostic about whether a second referendum is, is ideal because I don't think we ought to put all our trust in referendums. Do you think the referendum was a mistake? In the terms it was presented, yes. In what sense? We're not, as a country, used to referendums. We gave, I think, insufficient attention to what would be a credible majority, insufficient attention to what exactly the constitutional or legal status of such a decision would be, and 
the result was, I think, whether you're pro or anti on the issue, something which simply created confusion by the oversimplification of the terms in which it was posed. Would you like to make that the last referendum this country ever sees? Unless we can, like Switzerland, say, build in referenda as part of how we do our business with all sorts of conventions about them, all sorts of thresholds, or thresholds then I, I'm very unhappy about the idea that we have more referenda. When you look at universal credit now, do you think it should be ditched or paused or rolled back? I think we have to look at it again. I think the, the way in which its early implementation seems to be looking is, is something that doesn't increase the sense of confidence, the sense that there's a safety net. We need to look, for example, at the timescales on which people work. So at the moment, for example, people who fail to meet certain requirements when they're receiving benefits are sanctioned immediately. But when their right to benefits is established, there's a long wait before those benefits kick in. That seems to me a, a really worrying disparity. There ought to be things we could do about that. Looking again is a very timid response. It's already being looked at again um, by those in charge. I well, mean, would you personally like to see it ended like, or ditched? I'd like to see it ditched and rethought from the start so that we, we are looking at a system which gives effective assurance to people that they're not going to be abandoned. What I hear when I go to um, the food bank in Cambridge, to other places, is people who in certain circumstances simply feel the ground has opened up under their feet. They, they miss an appointment, they have six weeks without, without income. That ought not to happen. Margaret Hodge um, accused Jeremy Corbyn last year of being a racist anti-Semite. She said today, um, she didn't believe that had changed. When we're looking at that question of offence, is it still a problem if Jewish MPs feel that about their leader? I think it's a serious problem. Mm. For him? For him, for all of us. I think that as with a number of, um, a number of common prejudices which many of us thought were things of the past, anti-Semitism has, has returned. In, in some force in recent years, and we've, we've seen an uncomfortably large number of examples of it, people not realising quite what the impact of their words, their attitudes might be. Rowan Williams, thank you very much. Thank you.